Hey, praise the Lord. It's Brother Clinton once again. Welcome back to the Word Prophet channel, a Christian ministry dedicated to the purpose of teaching the Word of God to the people in the churches of God so that we can go back to serving God in spirit and in truth as Jesus Christ commanded. Praise the Lord. You might notice that my setting has changed a little bit. I'm just in a different room of the house. I'm, I'm actually doing some diagnostics on my main laptop because I've been having some difficulty with it and kind of looks like it's on the edge of dying with a, a motherboard problem, but hopefully that's not the case. I'm running some diagnostics and it's taking all afternoon, so I'm here in the living room recording a video for you because I need to get this word out to you. A very blessed sister in the, the northern part of California wrote to me today and she asked me about a particular verse of the scripture in Matthew. And I'd like to go there with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Let's go to Matthew chapter 7. And may God add a blessing to the reading of his word. I'm going to read for you verses 21 through 23, but what I want to concentrate on is verse 23 and what exactly Jesus was saying and intending to, to mean in that verse. It says in the scripture, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have not we prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils? and in thy name done many wonderful works? And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Praise the Lord. There are many, 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 many. You know, Jesus said there be many that stand here this day that shall not taste of death until they see the kingdom of God come with power. Jesus said this in the Gospel of Matthew, and I believe also in the Gospel according to Mark. And this is true. There are many, many, many in the churches who will stand before Jesus Christ on the last day, having gone to church all of their lives, having served him according to their own will and according to their own ways and their own traditions, but not according to the will of God. And they will hear him say, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. You know, it reminds me of a long time ago when I was just starting my walk with the Lord, and I was with some other men that I called brethren at the time, because we were all disciples of Jesus Christ, and, and we didn't know about the gospel of Jesus Christ. We didn't know about the way of salvation or any of that. We were just born of God, and we were seeking Him in His Word, and praying together, and, and witnessing to other people. And, and when we would pray, we would get together, and we would shout, and we would scream. And, well, not scream, but we would shout, and we would, you know, we would shout the promises of God, and we would act like soldiers on a battlefield in a way. And I'm not necessarily speaking against that, but we 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 didn't know the Lord yet. We didn't know Him yet. And I said to one of those men, one of those brethren one day, I said, you know, when we pray and we're shouting promises and we're pleading the blood of Jesus over this city and over that city, and when we're coming against Satan, coming against d demonic spirits and calling down uh, angels from heaven and all this stuff, I said, I feel, I have to be honest, I feel like God is on his throne way over there and the light is shining on him. He's on his throne and I'm way over here in, a, in the darkness in a corner shouting his promises. And the other brother, he looked at me and he said, you know, yeah. He says, I know how you feel. Praise the Lord. And shortly after that, we got separated because I was in prison at the time. And so, you know, I went where they transferred me and he went where they transferred him. But that's a moment that I'll never forget. And... You know, when we serve the Lord Jesus Christ, Jesus said that God is a spirit, and they that worship the Father must worship Him in spirit and in truth. And if we worship God with the traditions of men or the imaginations of our own heart, that's vanity. And even though it may seem very emotional, we may get, you know, people may get very emotional about it in their church meetings, and they may confuse that emotion for the anointing of the Holy Ghost, which happens quite frequently, actually. It's not the Holy Ghost, and it's not acceptable before God. It is what call, it's what God calls strange fire, and it is a stench in his nostrils. The people that are not born of God in the churches are many. They are the generation of Cain. They are of that wicked one. Um, Jesus called them the tares when he spoke a parable about the tares and the wheat. And, you know, the wheat in comparison to the tares is very minuscule. It's very little. Okay, when you... When you uh, winnow wheat, and then you compare afterwards the volume of the wheat that you have with the volume of the tares that you're going to have to burn up, uh, the tares are way, way, way more than the wheat. 
And that's exactly how it is in the churches today. There, are, Somebody said to one time, there are three kinds of believers in the churches. There are true believers, make-believers, and non-believers. Well, the non-believers we're not going to really talk about right now, but the make-believers and the true believers are the ones that we're talking about. Because Jesus Christ said that many will come to him in that day and say, Lord, Lord, didn't we cast out devils in your name and prophesy in your name and in your name do many wonderful works? And Jesus will say to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. You see, they're doing their wonderful works and they're casting out devils and they're very dramatic and they're, and they're doing all these things. They're laying upon the, their hands upon the sick and they're healing the sick in Jesus' name. And that's wonderful. And, and Jesus said for us not to despise those that do miracles in his name because whosoever will do a miracle in his name cannot lightly speak evil of him. But at the same time, these people are not obeying the word of God. They're not obeying the gospel of Jesus Christ. They don't believe the gospel of Jesus Christ. They believe that they're saved from their sins because they accepted him as their personal Lord and Savior. They believe that baptism doesn't save you, and they have different beliefs about the, you know, the gift of the Holy Ghost and about who God is and all these things, and they're not in the doctrine of Christ. And the reason that they're not in the doctrine of Christ is because they're not born of God and they can't hear his word. You see, their fathers in the days when, when Jesus walked the earth in the flesh, they were called the Pharisees and the Sadducees. <clears throat> and the Pharisees and the Sadducees were men who knew the scripture backwards and forwards and could quote it backwards and forwards. They could even quote it in Hebrew, but they couldn't hear it. And that's why Jesus said unto them, Why do ye not understand my speech? Even because ye cannot hear my word. You see, ye are not of my father's sheep as I told you. That's the difference. And th those are the ones who are going to hear Jesus Christ say, I never knew you. Because there are many, pay attention please, there are many, many, many multitudes, the vast majority of the people in the churches that call themselves Christians, that have a Bible and go to church every week. The vast majority of them have never been born of God. Many of them, many, 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 many of them have accepted Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. They believe they're lying pastors telling them that baptism doesn't save you, and so they've never obeyed the gospel of Christ. And then there's other multitudes of them who do believe the gospel of Jesus Christ, and they've been baptized in Jesus' name. They're filled with the Holy Ghost. They speak with other tongues. They cast out devils. They lay hands on the sick. They, they see miracles in their lives, but they've never been born of God. They haven't been born again. And they can't hear his word, and they refuse to obey his word. See, these are the people in the Pentecostal and Apostolic churches who insist that they abide in the Apostles' doctrine, but they don't. They don't. They teach certain parts of the Apostles' Doctrine. They also negate and deny certain other parts of the Apostles' Doctrine because they belong to a denomination. They have denominated themselves. And why have they denominated themselves? Well, it's because they're not abiding in the doctrine of Christ. So they can't rightly take the name of Jesus Christ. So they invented another name, a lesser name. And so they denominated themselves. You see, my brethren, there are many, 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 the vast majority of the people in the churches, way more than 99% of the people in the churches, are lost and hellbound. They don't know the Lord Jesus Christ because they're not born of his word. See, if you have this word abiding in you, then you, you don't sin, okay? And I'm not saying you can never make a mistake. What I'm saying is you don't sin. You don't live in sin. You're not a sinner anymore. If you have this word abiding in you, let's go to 1 John. Blessed be the name of the Lord. 1 John chapter 3. And let's start with verse 6. It says, Whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. Whosoever sinneth hath not seen him, neither known him. Whoa! Whosoever sinneth hath not seen him, neither, neither known him. Now many, many, many people in the churches are watching this video and saying, Oh no, no, that's not true. Nobody's perfect. Only Jesus is perfect. We're all sinners. We sin every day. Blah, 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 blah. Gabada, gabada, gabada. Well, they sound like a bunch of turkeys when they're saying that because they're just repeating the same nonsense that their pastors have told them. And it's a lie. Okay? Well, it's partially a lie. It's true in the sense that they all are sinners. But the reason that they all are sinners is because they don't have the word of God abiding in them. Because if you have the Word of God abiding in you, then you're not going to sin. You're going to live righteous. If you have the Word of God abiding in you, then you're going to obey the gospel of Christ and be saved from your sins. And then you're going to live in the power of the gospel of Christ. And you're not only going to be speaking in tongues and casting out devils and healing the sick. You're also going to be obeying the Word of God. And so that way, when you see Jesus Christ on the last day, he's not going to say to you, I never knew you. He's going to say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. 
enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. You see, it's one thing to have the scriptures memorized, and it's another thing to have the word of God abiding in you. This is why the people that have the scriptures memorized, they can't hear the gospel of Christ. The Bible says that baptism is for the remission of sins and that it saves us. The Bible says that. It's, it's not in a parable or an allegory. It, it says that straight out many times. But yet those people in their churches have the scriptures memorized and they say that baptism doesn't save you and that it has nothing to do with your salvation and that it's some sort of ordinance that you just do out of obedience after you're saved, which is a ridiculous lie that's not written in the Bible anywhere. You know, and these people have the scripture memorized and then they, they, they come out with these gods called God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, and Trinity, and Triune, and Eternal Son, and, and you know, the, the Triune Godhead, and all that nonsense that isn't written in the scripture anywhere. Because they can't hear the word of God. All they can hear is the rhetoric and nonsense that they have been filled with by their teachers because they are of the seed of Cain, the wicked one. You see? Now, I'm not saying that all of them are of the seed of Cain. Some of them have just been raised up in that system, but they, they are of the seed of Jesus Christ, and they will seek God, and they will find out that all that stuff is nonsense, and they will leave it and call it done like Paul did, the apostle of Christ. And they will embrace the truth. But most of those people are of the seed of Cain and will abide in those false doctrines and never hear the word of God because they're not born of God. That's just the basic truth. Jesus said, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. You see, so if you're not born again, you can't see the kingdom of God. You can't hear the word of God. And so even if you're baptized in Jesus' name and filled with the Holy Ghost and you're you know, in the Pentecostal church or you're in the apostolic church and you say, yeah, one God, baptism in Jesus' name, filled with the Holy Ghost, speaking in other tongues, praise the Lord, apostles' doctrine. Yeah, you say all those things, but you don't obey the apostles' doctrine. Why? Because you're not born of God. Because if you were born of God, you wouldn't sit in an apostolic church or a Pentecostal church having denominated yourself and trading the, the word of God for the traditions of men. You wouldn't be doing that. And the fact that you are doing that shows that you haven't been born of God. Either that or you just don't feel right about it. If you are born of God, you're sitting there and you don't feel right about it. You're going to have to leave. You're going to have to leave. You're going to have to come out of that organization and serve God in spirit and in truth. Because that organization is filled with liars, thieves, adulterers, fornicators, and various other kinds of sinners that, that don't hear or obey the word of God. Period. So that's the, that's the answer to the question. Jesus said that he will say unto many in that day, I never knew you. Why? Because they weren't born of his word. Because they weren't born of God. Let's continue in 1 John chapter 3. We read verse 6. Let's read verse 7. Little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. Isn't that so simple that a little child could understand it? He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. He that committeth sin is of the devil. Oh, wait a minute, Brother Clinton. But we're all sinners. No, we're not all sinners. You see, the Bible doesn't say that all are sinners. The Bible does say all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, but the Bible does not say that all are sinners. You see, the Bible says that there are some people that are sinners and there are other people that are saints. And saints are the people that have been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, Jesus Christ, the Son of God. We have been redeemed and converted from sinners into saints so that we are no longer under the power and dominion of sin. As the scripture says, for sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. You see, if you're under grace, then you're not under the law. If you're under grace, that means that the Spirit who gave the law is in you, causing you to fulfill the righteousness of the law, because you walk not according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. And therefore, you're not sinning. That's why you're not under the law. If you're sinning, then you are under the law. It doesn't matter what your pastor told you. If you're living in sin, if you have to sin every day, if you can't go one day without sinning against the Lord, then you are under the law. You are not under grace, you see, and you have not obeyed the gospel of Jesus Christ because the gospel of Jesus Christ is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. So if you come to me and you say that you're saved, but at the same time you say that you, you sin every day, if you sin every day, then what are you saved from? Nothing. Let's continue. Verse 8. He that committed sin is of the devil, 
For the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Hallelujah. You see, you're not going to enter into the kingdom of God if you're a sinner, my friend. If you're a sinner, you're not going to enter into the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is holy, and it is for the saints. The gospel of Christ is for sinners. The kingdom of Christ is for the saints. You see? Verse 9, Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin. Now, there are many who are going to want to argue with me about this, but it's not my word, so don't argue with me about it. If you want to argue about it, argue with God and ask Him, because it's His word, not mine. Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin, for his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin, because he is born of God. You see, if you're born of God, you cannot sin. You cannot live a sinful lifestyle if you're born of God. You cannot do it. If His seed is in you, and the seed is the Word of God, if His seed is in you, then you cannot sin. You might be able to quote the Word of God all day long. You might be able to quote it in Hebrew and Greek. That makes absolutely no difference to the living God if you do not obey His Word. It doesn't matter if you can quote it in Hebrew and Greek. It doesn't matter if you can write long essays about it. That is absolutely irrelevant. Nothing could possibly be less important in the universe than being able to write long essays about God's Word and, and, and being able to quote it in Hebrew and in Greek. The only thing that matters pertaining to the Word of God concerning you is whether or not you have it in you and you are obeying it. You see, this is why Jesus said, except you receive the kingdom of God as little children, ye shall in no wise enter therein. You see, now I don't speak against learning foreign languages. You can learn all the foreign languages you want. That's not a sin. There's nothing wrong with that. But if you're not a doer of the Word of God, if you're a hearer only and you're not a doer, then you're not a Christian, you're not a saint, and you're not going to inherit the kingdom of God. Even if you speak with other tongues, even if you lay hands upon the sick and see them healed, even if you have great crusades, even if you're the pastor or the bishop of your denomination, you're not going to inherit the kingdom of God. You're going to stand before Jesus Christ one day thinking that you're going to enter in and you're going to hear him say, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. You see, those that work iniquity are going to perish. It doesn't matter how many miracles they do. It doesn't matter how many devils they cast out. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how many marvelous works they do in the name of Jesus, glorifying the name of Jesus. And maybe many people will hear their preaching and will eventually come to, to, come to the Bible and get saved. But that person himself will be a castaway. Even as Paul said that he didn't desire to be a castaway because he lived in the fear of God every day of his life. And he said, I don't count myself to have attained, but this one thing I do, he said, forgetting those things which are past and looking forth unto those things which are before, I press forth toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. See, You see, Paul didn't sit back and go, oh, I'm saved. I'm good to go. Once saved, always saved. Yes, sir. Yes, sirree. Yes, sirree, Bob. I got a place reserved in heaven. Uh, so hang on just a second. I want to turn on the football game. Let me go to the fridge and grab a beer. Uh, no. Paul, the apostle of Jesus Christ, didn't think like that or talk like that because that would have been of the devil. You see, the devil sinneth from the beginning. He that committeth sin is of the devil, for the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin, for his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin because he is born of God. In this the children of God are manifest, and the children of the devil. Okay, this is the last verse I want to go over with you. In this, the children of God are manifest and the children of the devil. What does manifest mean? What's well, a word that we're familiar with? We know the scripture. Manifest means when something that is normally invisible becomes visible. Okay? You might say, well, we don't know who the children of God are. We don't know who, who's saved and who's not. Yes, you, you can know who's saved and who's not. And not only can you know, you are expected to know if you are a son of the living God. Because if you don't know then you won't know where to place yourself and you will perish with the wicked. If you don't know, if the Bible says come out from among them. If you don't know who them is, how are you supposed to come out from among them? You have to know who them is. And in order to know who them is, you have to be born of God and know the scripture. Verse 10, in this the children of God are manifest in the children of the devil. Okay, in this, in what? In what John is talking about right now, in holiness, in the fact that there are some people that are sinners and there are some people that are saints. And you can tell by the way a person lives his life whether or not he is a Christian. 
You can tell by the things that he does. He that doeth righteousness is of God, and he that committeth sin is of the devil. Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin, for his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin because he is born of God. In this the children of God are manifest, and the children of the devil. You can see them. By this you can see the difference between the children of God and the children of the devil. And it doesn't matter what they profess with their mouth. What matters is what they do with their life. In this the children of God are manifest, and the children of the devil. Whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God. Period. Well, actually, comma, neither he that loveth not his brother. And that goes into another subject. But, praise the Lord, if you, if you love him that begat, you love also them that are begotten of him. Which means that if you love God, you love your brother. If you don't love your brother whom you have seen, then how can you love God whom you haven't seen? Okay? So you're not fooling anybody with that. But the, the point is here that, that, that God was leading me to speak about and that this sister asked about is that there are many, many, many people in the churches who are not born of God. They're not born again. They've received the Holy Ghost. They walk in the anointing of God. They speak with other tongues. They prophesy in Jesus' name. Their prophecies may be true, may not be true. Um, they lay hands on the sick. They see sick people get healed. They preach the gospel. Or maybe, maybe it's their gospel, or maybe it's the true gospel. Who knows? But they preach, but they don't live according to the word of God. They're sinners. You see, they're not born of God. They're not of Jesus' sheep. They can't hear his word. They act religious in the church house, and then they act another way when they're outside of the church house. They don't know the Lord Jesus Christ. And many, Jesus said, will come to me in that day. Let me just finish this up by reading that passage for you again. It's in Matthew chapter 7 from verses 21 through 23. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. Remember the Lord Jesus said in Luke 6, 46, Why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? That doesn't make very much sense, does it? Call Jesus your Lord, your Master, but yet choose not to do the things which he says. That doesn't make any sense at all. But most people in the churches are doing just that. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Many will say unto me in that day, Lord, Lord, have not we prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? And then will I profess unto them, 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 I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. See, that's not to say that he doesn't know your name. It's not to say that he doesn't know who you are. What it is to say is that he, he's never known you. You never had a relationship with him. You were like I was a long time ago, shouting off promises into the darkness, thinking that I was in the presence of God, and the, and the throne of God was way over there, way over there, like two blocks down the road. And I was over here, Shouting in this direction, promises in the darkness. God, I plead the blood over Chicago. I plead the blood over Cincinnati. I, I cast down every power and principality over Phoenix. I cast down every power and principality over China. I command the gospel to go forth in China. I uh, blah, blah, blah. And I was doing all those things because that's what I was taught to do. And it's not to say that, that I didn't know God, that I wasn't having a relationship with him or beginning a relationship with him because that's what I was doing. But at that particular time when I was doing those things, I was just two blocks down the road from the throne, speaking those things, shouting those things off into the darkness. That wasn't impressing God at all. And those things weren't being accomplished because those things were not according to the will of God. The Bible says, if you pray anything according to my will, then I will do it for you. You see, if we pray anything according to the will of God, he will do it. But you see, we don't have the commandment or the authority to plead the blood of Jesus over anybody. You see, and we don't have the authority or, or the calling from God to command that anybody be saved or to claim people for the kingdom of God like I was taught. You know, when I was young, I, when, you're, when you come to the Lord Jesus Christ, immediately you get sucked up like by a religious vacuum into all these different denominations and everybody wants you to come to their church and learn how they do their things. And that's what I was learning from the people until God brought me away from that. You see, and he said, just fast and pray, open my word, put away all those theological books, Come away from all those radio ministries and just read my word, fast and pray, and let me show you. And that's what I did, and that's what he did. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And God will do the same thing for you if you know him, if you're born of his word. If you're not born of his word, this message has made you really angry, and 
Um, I just want to let you know that the comment forum is not going to be for arguments. If you have earnest questions about the Word of God, praise the Lord. I'm happy to share with you the Word of God. It's precious and holy. And the doctrine of Jesus Christ, it is precious and holy. And I'll be happy to share it with you if you if you come to the comment forum desiring to, you know, to ask questions and to learn of the doctrine of Christ. If you come to the comment forum to argue or as a theologian and you just want to, you know, preach your weird and diverse doctrines or whatever, please don't be surprised if your comment doesn't even appear or if you, you know, if you comment with foolishness, please don't be surprised if I answer you with foolishness. Because it is written, answer a fool according to his folly, lest he be wise in his own conceits. So this is a Christian ministry, and I am here to serve you in the Lord Jesus Christ, in the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Would you like to be saved? Would you like to enter into the kingdom of heaven? Well, this is where you're going to find the way. Jesus Christ is the way and the truth and the life, and I am here to lead you unto him so that you can take that way to the Father. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen.